A function is simply a rule that takes an input and gives you an output. So typically in high school and college, we would use something like a machine. Basically what happens is we start with a little box. This is our function machine. What happens is we stick in an input, it goes through the function, and then we get an output. So this is one way of drawing it. There's another way that you might see it. What you have are some values in what is called a domain. Then you take values in the domain and you map it onto something in what's called the codomain. And basically, these are your inputs. You have a function that happens and then you have outputs. And whenever you take a look at all of the inputs and all of the outputs, you get this little thing that's called a range. And we'll talk about this more in detail in future videos. But let's see an example of a function that adds one to a number. So if we think about our little machine here, what would happen if we put in one into our function machine, we add one to it, so we get two out. If we have a number like three, we stick it into our function machine, and what comes out would be four. So what we want to do is we want to express this algebraically. So you can think of what's happening here as you start with some number x. You can pick x to be whatever it wants to be. It goes into the function machine, and what comes out? x plus 1. Now, this isn't the notation that we typically write it in. Typically, what we would do is we would say f of x is equal to x plus 1. And how you can think of this is here you have your input. This would be x going in. And here you have your output. So this is what you're getting. And the function is the rule that's being applied. And it's typically algebra. So we have function machine and we have function notation. So let's see another example of this. What about the function that squares a number? What would this look like? Well, if we put one in into our little function machine, you would get one squared, which is just one. If we were to put two in our function machine, we would get two squared, and that would be four. So what's happening algebraically? Well, we're putting an x into our little function machine, and what we're getting out of it is x squared. And we can see this here. So 1 becomes 1 squared. 2 becomes 2 squared. So in a function machine notation, x goes into f and then becomes x squared. x squared is the output, and x is our input. So as a function, we can write f of x is equal to x squared. Now, how would we evaluate something like this? Well, if we want to check an input and an output, we simply substitute it in for x and then replace all x's in this spot on our output. So for example, f of 2, we'd say, what's happening at 2? So we put 2 into our x's, we get 2 squared, and this is equal to 4. So. When we evaluate functions, normally they're a little bit more complex than that. Like this is fx equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. So we could ask a couple questions. What is f of 1? What is f of 3? And just for the sake of showing something a little bit harder, what is f of x plus 1? So let's do f of 1 first. So the rule is we're going to replace all of our x's with 1's. So we're going to get 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 4. This is going to give us 1 plus 3 minus 4. And if we add all these together, we're going to get 0. So in other words, in our little function machine, we put in 1. And what's going to come out? We're going to get 0. What if we put in f of 3? Well, then we're going to get 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 4. Again, we're just sticking 3 in everywhere there's an x. So this would be equal to 9 plus 9 minus 4. This is the same thing as 18 minus 4, which is 14. So if we put 3 
into our little function machine here, what we're going to get is 14 out of it. Now, what about f of x plus 1? In fact, let me use a slightly different color to illustrate this. So what we would do in this case is every time that we have an x, what we would do is we're going to replace it with x plus 1. So here I've just left some open brackets. So we're going to put x plus 1 in here. We're going to put x plus 1 in here. And now to get our function, we're not going to get a number here because we still have a variable as our input, but we'll get a new output with our variables. So if we do some expansions here, we're going to get x plus 1 squared, which is going to be x squared plus x plus x plus 1. Then we're going to add uh, 3 times x plus 1, which is going to give us 3x plus 3. And then we'll just continue to subtract 4. So now it's just a matter of continuing along, grouping up like terms. So x squared plus x plus x plus 1 is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 3x plus 3 minus 4. We have 1x squared. We have plus 2x plus 3x. So this is going to be plus 5x. And then we have plus 1 plus 3 and minus 4. So this is just like saying plus 0. But we won't write that down. So in terms of this function machine, it does look a little bit different. So if we put in x plus 1 to our little function machine, what we're going to get returned is x squared plus 5x. So to illustrate how this works, I didn't pick the best numbers here, but let's just assume that we have to evaluate f of 2. So this is going to be 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4. This will give us 4 plus 6 minus 4, which gives us 6. Okay, so if we put in 2 into f, we get 6 out. Now, what if we put 2 plus 1 into f? This is going to be the same as 3 going into f. Well, if we put 2 plus 1 into f, what are we replacing? We're replacing the x with 2. So we're going to get 2 squared plus 5 times 2, which will be 4 plus 10, which is 14. And if we put 3 into f, we already saw before that we get 14 out. So in other words, uh, we have a function for putting something x in there and then x plus 1. So really we can figure out what the input of 3 is in two ways by evaluating f of x plus 1. Now, that's probably a little bit more than you'd ever need to do, but I just wanted to show you an example where we're putting variables in to see how we can get new functions out of it and then how we can apply it to our function machines. So just one set of problems. You can try them yourself. Try to beat me to it. So what is the function that adds 1, divides by 6, then squares the entire thing? So imagine we put in 1 into a function machine. We get 1 plus 1. We divide it by 6. And then we square the whole thing. So this would end up being uh, 1 squared which is equal to 1 over 9. This is the same thing as 1 over 3 squared. So in terms of our algebra, what we would say in this case is that x, I'll use a different color than green, is that x goes into our function machine, and what we get is x plus 1 divided all by 6, and then we square it. So in terms of function notation, this would look like f of x equals x plus 1 divided by 6, all squared. And we don't really need to simplify this, but we could. So let's do some evaluations here. f of x is equal to x squared plus 6. And here we have a negative number and a fraction in addition to some regular numbers. So let's do f of negative 3. So x squared plus 6, we're replacing all of the x's 
whatever we have in here. It's important that the brackets are still in the right spots. So we get negative three squared plus six. So negative three times negative three is nine, six. This gives us 15. What if we do f of three? Well, here we're gonna get three squared plus six, which is the same as nine plus six. So we get 15. It looks like whether the number is positive or negative, as long as the number is the same, we get the same output, which is kind of fun. If we put f of zero in, totally fine to put zero in, we're gonna get zero squared plus six. This is just zero plus six, which is six. And now, if we put in f of one half, well, the same thing applies. We're gonna get one half squared plus six. This is the same thing as one over two squared plus six, which is going to be one fourth plus six. Uh, if we want, we can convert uh, six into a fraction. So this would be one fourth plus, well, turning six into something over four. This would have to be six times four, which is 24 over four. And our final solution would be 25 over four. So this is how we can look at functions and how we can evaluate them. If it helps, be sure to comment, leave a like, share with your friends. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Put your questions down in the comments below.